I am always looking for new tools to improve my workflow. And then I came across a company called Fignel. And Fignel promises to automatically convert your Figma files into Elementor websites. The idea is that you download a template and then you import that template into Elementor and it automatically generates the whole design. That's why I think they called it Fignel because it's a combination between Figma and Elementor. And my YouTube channel is basically built around Elementor and Figma. So I emailed these people and I was like, hey, I'm your guy, okay? I'm gonna test this tool. I'm gonna make a video about it, but can I please get a free license? And they were so nice to give that to me. So in this video, we're gonna test this plugin together and then you can decide if it's something for you. Okay, let's get started. So in order for this to work, you have to go into your Figma, then go to plugins, then go to find more plugins and then search for Fignel. Then you fill in your email and your license code and then it works. But they even have a free option as you can see. You can convert five designs for free. So once you have the plugin installed, you need to select a frame which you want to convert. So you can select a whole artboard like this. And then it says we've recognized a section called Crypto Website Version 4 and that's the name of my artboard so that is correct. So then I can click on Download Elementor Template. But it's not so easy. Easy, okay <laughs> because you need to build a website with auto layout so if you've never used auto layout in Fignel then this conversion will not be good because auto layout is very similar to the container so let me show you what I mean in Elementor as you know you have the container you have vertical layout you have horizontal layouts which is very similar to how Figma works so before you click on download the Elementor template it's very smart to convert every section with auto layout so as you can see even for a section like this where I have a title over here and some icons. I have used the padding option, which is on 60. I have used the element gap option. So there's no fixed height. There is some height, 380 for example, but I've tried to use auto layout to its maximum and I've done that for all the sections on this website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to convert this whole page and then import it into Elementor and see what it does. And then there's one more thing that you need to know and that is things about widgets. Because how does this plugin know what everything is? I mean, a text layer, it can probably understand but a button, for example. So this plugin requires you to do some preparation inside of Figma. So for example, if you have a button like this, then you call it a button with these brackets around it. Or for this icon row, I actually want to use the gallery widget in Elementor. So you call it gallery. Or for this one, you can make containers and then mess around with icons, or you can just use the icon box widget, right? Because the icon box widget allows you to create something like this. Over here, this is gonna be hard for it because I actually wanna use a custom post type for this. This is not gonna be that, that hard. There are some icons in here. I'm, curious to see how it handles that and the footer is also pretty easy and they don't have all the widgets they have a list of widgets so if you scroll down on their homepage, you can see that they have a lot of widgets uh, that you can use so that the conversion is better but it's impossible for it to figure out if you want to use a post type or a custom post type of course but for widgets it can be useful if you go to their documentation yes it goes to another website which is not very well designed for some reason uh, even though their normal website looks pretty good but if you go to widgets over here, you can see all the widgets. So for example, if something is a nav menu, you click on the nav menu and then it says you need to use nav between the brackets. So that's what I've also done in my Figma, as you can see. And let's just start and download the Elementor template and see what's gonna happen. Okay, so it has saved a JSON file, as you can see. And now all we have to do is import it in Elementor. So let's create a new page. Add it with Elementor. All right, and now I am going to click over here because we want to upload our own template. So click on the upload button and import your JSON file. All right, here we go. Let's see what it does. Okay, here it is. So I'm now gonna click on insert. This will overwrite the design layout and other settings of the page you're working on. I get it. We're gonna click on apply and let's see what it does. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it reloads. All right, what has happened here? <laughs> Let me close the navigator. Let's see, guys. Wrong request, I don't know what that means. We're gonna scroll down, there's an empty space over here. Let's uh, switch back to my design. Oh, it didn't import the image uh, over here for some reason. 
uh, I've heard that that is something that the plugin should do because the founder explained to me that they are temporarily saving the image on their server so that you can copy and paste it into your website. But for me, it doesn't work. This wrong request is probably the icon, the icons that don't load in. Uh, let's see what it does. It did create a button. And what is this? Oh, this is not a title. It's a text editor. Not really a big fan of that. Okay, it creates text editor widgets for everything. So uh, it uses this widget instead of this widget for the headings, which is fine. Maybe I should also tell the plugin that this is a heading instead of a text widget. Let's scroll down. Okay, let's see. We're gonna compare the design. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, whoa, this is a long widget. What, what, what happened here? <laughs> It, oh, it has created the gallery. Let's change a few of the settings to see what has happened. I don't know what it does here with the height. It did not convert my images really well. Uh, we're gonna go to the next section. Here it says wrong request as well. Okay, so the icons it didn't do. So let's try to, you know, add an icon ourselves. the checkbox icon. So this is what should have happened. Okay, here's another image that should have worked. Another button and another text editor widget. Okay, this looks uh, pretty similar. It also didn't include the backgrounds, as you can see, because this section has an image background for that blur. And on the top, we did have this blur in the background, which was just an image with absolute positioning. That's pretty hard to, to figure out for the, for the tool. I get it. Okay, this button should not be on two rows. I don't know why that is. Oh, it has created a width with pixels. Okay, the footer is also not center aligned, but we can easily fix that. Clicking on center. Let's see the top. What is this? It has created a nav menu widget, but we do not have a menu on this website. So let's just create that. So let's see how it looks. Okay, I'm going to click on update and I'm going to refresh the screen. Okay, so now it has loaded in the menu. Didn't really take the styling, but it did take the colors, but then in inverted way, because the active one is gray here, and here the active one is white. This is not a button, because but maybe I didn't do that well. Oh no, okay, I didn't give this the right tag, so then it doesn't understand that it's a button. Okay, so it didn't convert all of my images, but I have to admit, in another test that I did, it did convert a lot more images. Uh, it did convert the icons as, as well, as you can see, and even the gallery. So for some reason right now, it doesn't really show that. I don't know why, but it should work with the images. But let's see how it's built, right? So let's see if it added the 100 pixels padding that I put into it. We're gonna go to advanced and no, it didn't add the padding. So how does it create the space over here? Let's see what it did. Okay, so what it does, it, it creates minimum height. I did put in a lot of effort to use the auto layout features and not use a fixed height, but it didn't understand that, which is a bit disappointing. And what I also did is I really paid attention to the amount of uh, containers or as they called in Figma frames I used so that it would understand that this is all part of one. But it has created a separate container over here and a separate over here, which is not really necessary. You could just do it in one and I only have one. So why not use my containers, right? <laughs> this section I didn't really do for some reason, but it did create this button. Let's see how it's built. Oh, okay. So what it does, it, it adds pixel padding to all of the buttons. So this is not based on the global button widget, but it just add pixels everywhere. And I think that's, yeah, the main thing with this plugin, it just add pixels everywhere, as you can see. It doesn't, it's not really that smart yet, but it is incredible. I mean, let's not lie that it did understand I maybe like 50% of the website, but I don't like this padding in the button. Let's see, did I do that in Figma 29 on left and on right on the get started button? No, it's 30 and 15. So it doesn't, doesn't really take a look at my settings. It's just like, no, we have calculated it ourselves. <laughs> but that's, that's something you shouldn't do because I put in a lot of effort to use the right values in Figma. Let's see in the footer. Okay, they create an extra container, which is not necessary. Oh, and here's another container. Okay, so we have three containers here for this footer, but we actually only needed one. So yeah, it does create too many containers. It does create too many pixels. It doesn't apply the padding. It, for me, it didn't do 
2D images, but they did in another version that I tested. So far, I am like half impressed, okay? <laughs> Let's see. We're gonna go to tablet and mobile to see how that actually looks. Okay, let's see what it did to the background container because I wanna use some width. Did it add some padding? Oh, oh, object right and left. I never saw that. Okay, that's interesting. And now it adds padding on the top and on the bottom. Let's go to mobile. Oh, that doesn't look that good. Okay, mobile. Ooh, mobile doesn't look good. It has destroyed all the typography, to be honest. What happened here? Line height? I mean, I didn't give them a mobile design, but like you could have just not changed it and then it would be better because then I can just connect it to my own global fonts and scale it in that way. But now it has added some weird numbers for, for mobile. So that is something that I think it shouldn't do. Let's see, it has probably used minimum height again. No, where does the padding come from? It's so weird. I don't really understand how it's built. So for me, in order to fix this, it will be more work than rebuild it myself. Um, so I am not a big fan of the mobile version. Oh, it has really messed up this one as well. Okay, mobile version needs a lot of work. And also something that you need to do is reconnect all of your colors, of course, to your global font. So Right now it has uh, imported that color, but of course you always wanna work with your global colors, which I haven't set up on this website, but normally I always do because this is just a test website. So you have to reconnect everything. So it's better for them if they don't change any of the fonts on mobile, because it's much better to put your font sizes inside of the site settings anyways. Okay, let's go back to desktop because this mobile version is not making me happy. <laughs> the desktop version looks okay. Okay, so like I said in the intro, I think this has a lot of potential. It's not here yet because I have a few complaints. My first complaint is that I put in so much effort to, to use the container or auto layout in Figma and it didn't use my values. So then, then the question is why did I even do it, right? Because it's already almost impossible for a plugin like this to understand how you want it to build. So then when I give it input, use that input. And my second complaint is the usage of pixels for everything and especially what they've done on the mobile version. I mean, Come on, this is this is not good. So personally, for me, it would not be a great plugin yet because I'm pretty advanced in the container and building it myself is probably faster than trying to figure out how they build it and fix all of the mistakes. I think that the, the team of Fignel has some work to do with this plugin. If you guys have ideas how to make this better, put it in the comments because they're probably gonna read it. And the reason why I still uploaded this video is because I think that these kind of plugins have a lot of potential. If they become smart, in understanding what we want, then this can help us in the future. Maybe Figma or Elementor itself will develop a plugin like this and it will be better. Yes, it's not perfect, but companies like these have potential to be really good in a few years. So I hope that Fignell uses my feedback to improve the product. I myself am very curious what they're gonna do in the future. They're probably gonna be better and then I can test it again. And with companies like these, it's always the case that the pricing is good when they are just starting out so right now let's go to their pricing page over here okay so they have monthly and yearly plans like I said they have a free version right now they have monthly packages where you can convert unlimited pages but they also have a lifetime deal which is $4.99 so if you believe that products like this can be very valuable in the future then it's smart to buy the lifetime it's the same with what I said with bricks it's a starting company with a lot of potential so sometimes I already buy the plugins hoping that in the future it will be good and then I have the lifetime deal because many companies delete their lifetime lifetime deal after a while. I'll put a link in the description below. But again, personally, with the current workflow that I teach on YouTube, this tool is not good enough. That's why I will not be using it in my videos, but I will keep my eye on it to see how it develops. But for now, it's just not production ready. And we still have to spend a lot of time learning the container, learning everything in Elementor if we wanna build websites that are fast and don't make us crazy. Because building is a lot more fun than fixing mistakes. Okay guys, what do you think? Do you believe that this is shit or do you believe that this has potential? Let me know in the comments below and hopefully I will see you in the next video.